Uh, hello and welcome to the uh, painting stream. Uh, I am Nicole from Dyson Dungeons and I'm going to uh, be painting today. My dad will be joining uh, shortly. He's just finishing up some stuff. And uh, yeah, this is a show where we paint D&D terrain pieces like this river, um, D&D figures to use in D&D, like this horse that I've been working on. It is hopefully going to be finished today. And um, we will, uh, yeah, we print a lot of these figures ourselves. Um, like these uh, river tiles we printed here on the printers behind us. Um, if you're interested in the designer, they are listed under attributions on our website, DysonDungeons.com. And these are uh, all pieces that we use in our um, D&D stream, which airs on uh, Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern. So if you're interested, check this out. Um, yeah, so I have been working on this horse. Here. I've gotten basically the base code in, um, and I'm going to be working on doing some detailing and shading on it so it doesn't look so bright and flat. That's going to be my main uh, goal today. Hi, yeah. I've been gone for a while. <laughs> yep. No, I'm not. My dad is back from his trip. And we'll be uh, joining for painting again. Yeah, so I was just talking through all the basic opening stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to be doing is taking this very fine brush um, and some black paint and enhancing some of the creases within like the cloth on the horse here well wow. so that when i wash it it'll show up a little better that horse looks really good yeah it's a kind of ample one yeah there's a lot of stuff on it isn't there yeah but that's my goal today is hopefully finishing the horse we'll see some parts, like there's a braiding, or not braiding, a quilting on the saddle here. Um, that will get shown better when I do a wash on it than trying to put it in by hand. Because um, it's a fairly shallow part of the uh, figure. But just for an example of what I'm looking to do. I'm going to be taking a very light amount of black almost a dry brush level and adding it i did on the bottom of the stirrup here hi char haven't uh been a while so it doesn't show very much but on the stirrup there i am putting in a little black just to enunciate those creases mm. make them look a little more defined how have you been how's college going Hey, I get it. You're you're all the way over in the in England now, right? And you're going to college, so there's a lot of adjustment that must be happening. So don't worry about it. Hmm. So should I try a horse? Ooh, if you want. You wanna go for armor or this is the unarmored. But fancy. That's like the one you're doing. Yeah, and the other one has armor on it. Mm -hmm. You just moved to Australia? <laughs> I thought you were in the UK. Wow, that's that's that is halfway across the earth. Dang. We're we're in Australia. <laughs> one of the cities, I'm guessing, or.
<coughs> Australia's always been one of those places that I thought was cool, but also like way too many gigantic bugs. Okay. But. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, that is coming through on the East Coast of Australia. Nice, so uh, kind of near, like, Great Barrier Reef, all the sharks, stuff like that. That's exciting. That is very loud. Or even are you? I hear you, but I don't. Mm -hmm. He's under the under my stool. Here's the culprit. <laughs> He's not a big fan of being picked up unless all his legs are dangling. This is our older, louder cat. That better. I've acknowledged your presence. And okay, he's just crawling into the workbench now. So yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like to be in cabinets and cave. Like yeah, he's cave. one of those cats that loves the little tight spaces, like a lot of cats. <clears throat> One thing I'm gonna do now that I'm near finished with this is, could you hand me one of those gloves? I wanna put it on my right hand so my fingers don't mess with the. Oh, when you wash. Well, also, I don't wanna mess up the base coat too much. I'm like the oils on your fingers can really do that. Yeah, I just had to pick him up once, and now he's been sated for the moment. So what color should I start with here? Brown, maybe? Uh, for the horse? Mm-hmm. Yeah, reddish-brown could work. And we'll use red-brown, then. That cap has gotten a little messy. This cap? Mm-hmm. It's... To, does the top need to be cleared off? Yeah. I'm not sure. Like a ridge of dried paint around it? Pretty much. Yeah. Not too bad, though. It was a little rough to open, though. Mm -hmm. Earlier. So, Australia, that's pretty exciting, though. Is that for school or something? Oh, okay. And you went to Australia? No giant spiders yet? Yeah, I know. I've seen pictures, and it's always like like those huntsman spiders look terrifying. Yeah, you know, we say that everything in Australia is trying to kill you. Although huntsman spiders are supposed to be very docile and just hunt other insects, but they're humongous and terrifying. Although we actually get, uh, in, down in Georgia, there's been this spread of, um, spiders. Mm -hmm. It is web building spiders, um, that are about that big. Yes. Yeah. With the legs. Um, but they're like super docile, even if they're like 
terrified and you're holding one, it won't bite. But, like, they're giant, and they build these, like, extra ultra durable webs that are, like, in big cone shapes. But I guess they're an invasive species here in America. Well, hopefully you don't encounter too many giant spiders. Mm-hmm. Or jellyfish or snakes. Or yeah, if you're going in the water, I know there's a lot of nasty, like, you got sharks, saltwater crocodiles. Venomous snakes. Venomous snakes. Box jellyfish. I mostly know Australia from watching nature documentaries. If I'm honest, and crocodile hunter. I don't really like how the black turned out on the yellow, so I'm gonna paint back over that section. I just did a test, basically. And it's too much on the yellow, so I'm gonna rely on a black wash for that part. But I'm just trying to bun bump up the contrast on this dark green. Because it's, uh... Being a dark green, it doesn't show super well. <laughs> Is your Wi-Fi acting up there, too? I feel like... Wi-Fi is one of those things that never works perfectly. Ever. Was always something. No matter how good a connection you get and all that. So I'm gonna just touch up that yellow. Doesn't get you as much, so I'm giving you a nice good shake. Yeah, you might want to stir it from the bottom. I'll see. I'll see how good it is. <clears throat> this is that primer that doesn't uh, adhere. No, that's not actually. That's the old primer we used to have, the black one. Mm -hmm. It's weird, it's still a little sticky. Yeah. That primer back then wasn't all that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a fun one to explain, I'm sure, to a kid. Yeah, let that be for a second. Let that yellow dry a little. I'm going to take a look at my ox here. So, I think I'm going to try and finish up these ox while I'm going back and forth on the horse. For this ox, because the primer was so bad, there's some cleanup spots. And I just realized I grabbed the wrong gray, so now it has a nice uh, bright gray nose that I'm going to have to go back over once it dries. That's me not paying attention to 
which color I put on which model. Because I did dark gray, not neutral gray. On this guy. So, I'm gonna look at the brown one. <laughs> um, see where I need touching up on? If anywhere. Yeah, so like I thought, there's a little flake off on the tail and the inside thigh on one of these legs because of the poor quality of the primer. And uh, I'm gonna need to do a little touch up on around one of the horns. So, I do remember that I did red brown, I believe, for the fur part of this. The, I mean, the main body. Do you mind if I move this over here? Mm -mm. I just need to steal a little bit for some touch up. You're right about this. You, there are straps all over. You can't really see until you paint until them. Until you paint them. Yeah. Those horses are very. Strappy. Yes. <clears throat> now you can refer to one of the horses I painted to see how some of the straps are uh, organized on it, but the positioning is going to probably be a little different. Okay, so I need to do a little touch up on the, I don't know, mane isn't the right word, and it's like a furry back part. This furry part of the axe. Because I did one coat on it, and it needs a little cleaning. Because um, of the poor quality of the primer. They gave me there's just a couple spots here and there that didn't quite take the paint. And I can use this dark brown also to clean up a little bit around the the horn where the ivory ran. And then another thing I need to do while I have this dark brown out is uh, just hit the tail a little bit with uh, where there is fur on the end of the tail. Which is pretty straightforward. Just try not to uh, hit the legs is the only difficult part. Okay, not so... Not so bad. So I think, honestly, the horns aren't like 100% perfect, but it's just an ox. It's not going to be used all that much. So what I'm probably going to do once I clean up this guy is do the um, clean, put some color on the bases. Some sort, I don't know which yet, but I'm going to put some uh, color around the bases and finish up the ox as well. But let me see how my horse is doing. Okay, so one thing I know I need is a couple tiny spots of my leather. So I'm gonna put the teeniest, tiniest drop I can on. And just go over a couple spots where the leather's not perfect. And then I think once it's dry, I will be ready to do the uh, finishing touches on this horsey. Now 
Which is pretty exciting. So one thing I'm going to do is put in a little black for the eyes on all of these animals. Which is a uh, annoyingly difficult part to do sometimes. You want a very teeny tiny amount. Locate the eye. And just barely touch it in. And since these are ox and stuff, I'm not going too crazy with the eyes. I'm just putting in a little black spot, basically, to show where they are and everything. They don't... you don't really need to go, like, super crazy realistic because, you know, it's just... Just like that, just to show there's an eyeball located there. Yeah. I'm gonna do the same on the horse, which I'm gonna be a little more careful. Okay, horse eye on. And then this uh, gray guy needs eyes as well. And since I have the black out, I'm gonna touch up his fur coat. Fur shawl, I don't know. Mane, I guess I'll just use this. I don't know the technical term. Um, this guy actually needs a fair amount of touch-up. The black shows really well where the paint did not stay. So, there's a couple, there's just little white dots in the fur where the first coat did not want to adhere. Yeah, that's really annoying, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, it's extra obvious where the ivory shouldn't be so I'm just gonna take this small brush and give it a very careful little covering like so
one last little white spot. And then the tail. I also need to get some black where the tail is. Just to show that it also is uh, furred. I'm going to take a look. One last look over the horse and see if I am happy with how everything is sitting. And uh, I can jump into some uh, shading, perhaps. Yeah, bronze on the saddle part. The leather looks like it should be where it is where it should be. And everything looks uh, right to me. So I think it's about time I make this horse look better <laughs> by putting a uh, wash over it. I'm going to be not using my teeny tiniest brush, but I'm going to use this blue one that I use a lot, which is still a pretty small brush, um, just so I have a lot more control since it's not a terrain piece or something like that. And I think I'm going to use an umber wash for the leather parts and a black wash for a lot of the other parts. Um, so what I need is to grab two cups. But first, I'm going to do I start with the umber wash on the leather, or... Mm. I think I should start with the umber wash mm -hmm. first, because it's less. And the black wash will cover it better than the other way around. Yeah, that's true. So, I'm going to grab a little bit of my umber wash here. Um, there's a lot of surface, it's a deceivingly large amount of surface area. But it's still not the biggest figure, so I'm only going to do a couple drops of umber wash and add as needed. But... So this is all going to help tone down and sort of enunciate the leather parts of the horse's gear. I'm trying to make sure I get every part of it. And just sort of carefully and methodically going across every single piece of leather strapping. Leather strapping that I can, that you can reasonably find. find on this horse. I'm sort of starting on the left side and then I'm gonna switch around to the right. And it is a very wet thing. It's a wash, so washes are very wet. 
and they will run, but you can use that to your advantage and sort of get them to run into cracks and crevices and different subtle parts of the model um, in order to bring out those details in ways that you otherwise would have to spend countless hours um, working on. The downside is because it's so wet, it does take a considerable bit longer to dry. So you have to sort of be ready to wait. So, Dad, mm -hmm. when do you want to go get pumpkins this year? No, actually, we could go this weekend if you want. I think it'll be okay. Saturday? Maybe on Saturday? That's right, because we're not, uh, not coming up here Saturday. We could go. And run it by everyone else. See what they think. A little bit late, so the selection will be down, but not too bad. Alternatively, we could go during the week. Yeah, I mean, we could go tomorrow. <clears throat> I think, I, mean, I think the furnace tuners are coming tomorrow. I'll have to check when. Sometime this week or weekend. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely before, some, before next Monday. Having fun? Mm-hmm. Now you see what I've been working on all this time. So, yeah, I am just uh, slowly and carefully applying this umber wash to all the leather straps. It just really brings out a lot of the finer detail in the model. And we've been trying to get all the edges on the underside where you can barely even see it. Because, you know, you know it's there and it's always good to be thorough. A uh, nice thing with wash, though, is that it's easy to pick up and remove if, like, a spot collects somewhere you don't want it to. Like, a little came off the sides here onto the fur. And all I really need to do is dry my brush off a bit and then, like, poke them. Uh, and they get sucked up into the brush pretty easily. So, wash can be... A little bit of a challenge, but quite forgiving. So, oh, I'm just doing the leather straps. Mm -hmm. And it makes just, it just makes it all richer. Yeah, and that leather brown with umber wash, wash really ends up looking always, always ends up looking good. Yeah.
Uh, I'm going to rotate around to the back and get the left side of the the left the right stirrup. Sorry, the right side of the um, saddle and the back the hind quarters of the horse. Wash will run a lot with uh, gravity, so as you move your figure around, you have to be a little conscientious of uh, the orientation you're holding it at, at least while it's still drying. give this horse a little time to dry, but the umber wash is on the leather, and it's still quite shiny and wet, so um, I might put a little extra umber wash on after it dries a little more, and I can handle it, but I don't want to attack it too much while it's still wet. So, what I will do instead is take one of my ox and I need to select what color these ox are standing on. What 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 does this base look like? like it's got sort of like rockiness. Yeah, it looks kind of gravelly, doesn't it? I might do like a neutral gray. Mm-hmm. It's mainly stones. Yeah. You don't want to be painting all the individual stones. Uh, not for an ox. Yeah. I don't feel like it's worth that much time for an eye. But I will do neutral gray, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and get around the hooves of the ox. Um, I might touch these up with a little ivory or black later, the hooves, but they're very ill-defined between the rocks here. So the first thing I want to do is get a sense of what's what. And to do that, I'm going to sort of surround the hooves with my neutral gray paint here. Like that. So, <laughs> there's my ox, and I'm just getting around the feet so I can fill in this base with a base coat of neutral gray without hopefully getting my ox all messed. Thank you. 
Okay. And now that I have this roughly in, I'm just gonna hop along and cover the rest of it with this neutral gray base coat. And I am getting a little bit of paint on my glove, which I'll try and just wipe off a little so it doesn't get onto anything else when I change models. Dropped it a little, got more paint on my fingers, and I have to repaint a section now because this is not an adhery sort of primer. It flakes off very easily, especially while driving. So, I'm gonna grab it with my non painted hand and set it to the side and let it dry. And then I'm just gonna take a little splash of water and sort of wipe these gloves down a little so that they're at least not wet with paint. Just because I don't want to find big gray spots on my other fingers. <laughs> Alright, so. Take a quick look. This is my uh, ox, and I just have some gray paint on the base for now. Um, I'll give that a wash later. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab my other ox here, hold it fairly similarly, and I'm going to repeat the process. So, a little neutral gray around the hooves to give myself some space to work. Make sure you guys have to drop your model a little bit. 
Now that I have around the hooves done in, I'm gonna just take this slightly larger brush and uh, finish covering. Just to get it done and over with. So I can move on to uh, back and check my horse. See how that is coming along with the wash. get some of this paint off. Oh, that got running. The what? No, oh, this blue that I'm using. Mm. Oh, that's one of the older ones. No, it's a new one. I, think. I thought that was one of your very old ones. It could be if they're all dusty. I think I'm going to wait a bit for that paint up in the bottom and retouch what I just did. Since those bases are going to take a minute to dry, I'm going to take a second to clean all my brushes that I have been using. Make sure they're Mostly paint free. I'm gonna check my gloves on my other hand just to make sure I'm not rubbing paint off. Alright. So, taking a quick gander at the horse, I see the, uh, Umber wash is taken pretty well in some spots and less well in others. So I'm just going to go through carefully with a small amount and do some targeted application of umber wash into areas that I just want enunciated a little bit, you know, brought a little bit darker, a little bit more. Umbery is the technical term, I think. Give my brush another rinse. <laughs> and now I'm gonna take this glove off because it's a little messy and take the time to change one of the prints back there. Well, that umber wash dries.
have to keep the uh, the printers going all the time. Do you want me to grab my other armored horse so you can look at it? Okay, I was wondering what some parts of it were. Oh, up here. Yeah, it's just like this little like flare panel. Yeah, yeah. I stopped painting could, this other color, but I think I'll, I'll color. You could theoretically paint it like a um, like a little heraldry piece on it or something. So call it heraldry colors. Mm-hmm. If you wanted, but yeah, it's kind of an awkward piece. So, before I put on my new gloves, I'm going to uh, put some black wash in here because this black wash bottle always gets on my thumb and gets everywhere. And I would rather have that under my glove than on the glove. Honestly. I'm looking forward to being done with that bottle. Because of that. You know, the one that squirts at you all the time? Mm-hmm. It's a very squirty bottle. Alright. Glove on. I'm gonna take a quick look at how... Um, my umber is drying. It looks alright. So, now it's time to start with my black wash. I'm gonna kind of go for a top-down approach here, starting at higher points and working down in order to uh, just work with gravity other than against it. Trying to get in the ears a bit to give that sort of sense of depth where the model has it. And sometimes a little too much collects in an area and you just gotta pull it back out. Um, it's sort of the nature of washes in general but especially the black wash and you gotta just sort of start to get a sense of how to control the amount that's on your brush at any given time Moving down to the nose now, and I want to... There's a lot of little detail in this horse's face that I really want to just get to show off a bit. And to accomplish that, I'm actually going to apply a little more than I want. Dry off the brush and suck some out of spots where I don't want it as much, and that will give me a nice defined, like, nostril and mouth. <laughs> Hi Coco, yes, thank you. I am very trying, I'm trying very too much to focus, and 
my dad here is also getting this base code in on a horse. I am putting in the um, wash on uh, this little horse figure here that I've been working on. I'm starting the face up. Let me see if I can get a focus on. So I'm starting to shade in the face here so that the rest of it doesn't look so uh, popped in color. I've put some umber wash on the leather parts of it, and now I'm going in with a black wash to put tone down some of the colors and sort of fill in some of the uh, smaller cracks and crevices that make up this horse. And there's some fairly difficult to reach places. But luckily the um, luckily the wash is fairly forgiving and that insofar as you can remove it easily. And there's a lot of little sections of um, bridle around this horse's face that you just need to sort of work around. Which is what I'm trying to do. We'll see how well I achieve it. Because the uh, model here has a lot of very nice sort of um, delineations of the musculature of the horse that I'm hoping to get to show a little just by putting in some shadows and shading with my black wash. Like along the neck, there's these little muscle, mus muscle, muscle lines um, that the wash should settle into fairly nicely as I put it in. and help bring out the sort of shape and look of this horse that you might not otherwise see when it's just a flag gray. And it's always important to be so uh, focused in that you knock your own brush out of your hand. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing, gonna... so I've, I've, I've shaded in the head and not the body yet, so it'll give you if it focuses. A good example of the color difference. I hate this camera sometimes. It really does not want to focus. There it goes. Okay. So it's still shiny because it's wet, but... It gives you sort of an example of the level of uh, shading and detail that black wash can achieve. And sorry, I interrupted you. No, oh, I was just going to say what I've been doing is I put a uh, base brown coat on this horse and started a blue for that under blanket. Now I'm going to try to paint all the straps with this really dark blue, but it was sitting for a long time and it got pretty runny, so it up in the bottom, give it a good shake, and see if it works at all. And then try to figure out which parts are straps and which parts are horse. That is a challenge. Yeah, it actually kind of is. But you have a... I, I brought a reference of a similar horse that I painted earlier for you. Mm-hmm. Right here. I don't know I'm covering the face with my hand, but... 
They have a lot of little straps and everything. And I am going to just keep slowly working my way down the horse, trying to control where and when the wash goes. But there's a lot of little crevices to this horse. And I don't want any areas that I don't have covered, because when you just have that flat color next to a shaded color, it can really pop. Which is often not a good thing. Often, most of the times. I'm kind of going on a almost a subtractive method where I'm putting in a little extra and then pulling back um, extra wash and subtracting from it just so I make sure that I am getting the correct amount on there. And one spot that you want to make sure you get, he has this little central ring in his harness. Um, and I want to make sure that that ring and the space in between the ring is shaded in properly. Moving around to the other side. There's a lot of hidden surface area on a horse. Um, you know, you gotta make sure all sides of the legs are shaded properly and all the different angles. And it's easy to like, especially when a leg is up, miss a little bit on the underside. And then when it's all dry, it'll show quite badly, but while it's still wet, sometimes it can be a little hidden. And the black wash isn't going to show terribly much on this uh, dark green, but I am going to pop a little on it just to get a consistent uh, color across the horse. Um, you don't want something that looks out of place on a figure. So, well, I know it's not going to cause too much of an effect, um, which is why I went in with the green and added in some black, just straight black paint to um, enunciate those sections. I will put a bit of black wash across the green as well. And remembering to get the back sides of it so that it is not inconsistent. Okay, so I have sort of the, the front half of the horse drying. Um, I'm going to re-angle how I'm holding it slightly and tackle this saddle, which has a nice quilt in 
pattern in it. And I'm hoping, as long as I'm careful, to bring that out with a black wash. Because otherwise, doing a tiny quilting like that by hand will be painful. So I'm just trying to be a little careful with the volume I apply. But I want to make sure I sort of get the wash down into those creases. To show off that part of the model. So I'm going to set this horse aside for a moment because there's still wet sections from all of that wash that I'm doing and I don't really want to um, mess them up too much with my hands. So the other print in back behind us is finished and I'm going to quickly pop over it and change that. Why don't you tell people what you're doing? I am painting the reins. It came down from the head of the horse there. Find the camera there. Painting them a dark blue, which um, looks almost like the primer, so I can hardly tell which is which. Do you want to unveil some of our river tiles? Sure, let's see how they turn They've out. They've been drying for ages. So this is a prototype river tile we painted and uh, put a sort of resin-ish finish on to give it a glossy wet appearance. So that was the prototype. <laughs> and these have been curing. Just taking an initial look at them, I think they might want an extra coat. Yeah. Doesn't look like it leaked out this time. No. The duct tape worked a lot better at holding the... Uh, but it does look like it'll need an extra coat. Because I like this sort of thickness that we have on here, and right now they look a little more like they're coated, at least in person. Yeah. Um, as like opposed to kinda, as opposed to like water. a nice sort of thick water. Mm -hmm. The nice part is now that we have some on there, the rest should go on fairly smoothly. Yeah, we can pour some more on today if you want. Yeah, if you want to, when you're done with uh, with making a mess of this. With making a mess. Mm -hmm. So for these, we got this experimental, it's uh, realistic water, it's called. It's made for um, train sets. There's a surprising amount of things made for train sets you can use for D&D that we like to do. What I'll probably do is bring them over one at a time, pour in, and replace them. Because I want to give this horse a little bit of time for the front half to dry so I can handle it. But you can sort of see the difference. Mm hmm. Between yeah, the yeah. butt and the front. Yeah, it doesn't take too much to bring it out. No. Just some careful application here and there. And the bases on my arcs here are still drying. And I don't want to mess with them too much because the primer sucks a lot. Um, and if I accidentally touch them, they will be a huge pain in the neck to fix. And our cat came back. Yeah. 
Okay, well, let me just paint these long, skinny, not very difficult rings. Are you doing the leather, like a dyed leather? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Dark, dark, uh, dark blue, blue dyed. Mm hmm. Cutting a cat with a glove on. Set aside my these cups of wet paint and water before pouring. Yeah, you can sort of see how hard it is to tell what you're doing until it's painted, which means you have to like figure it out, paint it. And then repaint it. <laughs> yeah, go back over. I'm gonna take a spot of my black wash and go over some of these quilted parts again um, on the chair while you're doing that in order to really get that pattern out. Okay, I'll set that aside for now. And we'll pour some fake water. Realistic water. Realistically, realistic fake water. I think it's another you know, one to two millimeters. Mm hmm. Kind of like it was last time. Yeah. So I just started building up the levels of this. You know, I don't actually know what it is. I'm assuming it's a resin. Some sort of plastic of some sort. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but it definitely needs more. Yeah. We okay. were a little. Well, the last time we put it in, it leaked all over. And... Well, on the prototype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we were a little more conservative with the amount we poured last time. But, you know, just keep building up layers. Yeah, it's probably better to do it that way. And luckily, it's actually kind of nice. It, come, it falls in a little cloudy. You can see where it is. Um, but it does clear up as it dries. And there's a lot of cracks and crevices in these river tiles, so uh, what he's doing is pushing some of the excess down into those cracks and crevices with a toothpick, just to make sure. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to level it. It'll stay fairly level on its own. It's liquid, so um, you don't have to worry too much, but it does need to flow into all of those spaces. How do you feel about that height? That looks better. Yeah, we'll see what it's like when it dries. Yeah. It needs, the sun needs to be up just a little bit, but not too much. You can watch the level. Yeah, I guess I'd rather put like three or four thin coats in than make a mess. Then have a, a big thick one thick one that never sets. Some corners.
And I'm just sort of putting paper over the top of them so the dust doesn't collect in the uh, liquid as it's curing. Those look good? Yeah, that one's a little sicker. We'll see what happens. It, they don't have to be perfect. No, mm -hmm. they're not going to be. Like, when they're on the table, they're not going to be that noticeable if one is thicker than the other. I like a millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, getting these nicely uh, so that they... Because right now, the way it looks from the side, at least in person, is that they're wet, like moist, but not, but not deep. actually deep. They're like more like a model that got recently sprayed with water than a uh, proper river tile. Yeah, I'm going to guess I need to do this one more time. Probably. Um, and if we do do it one more time, I think we'll probably do the prototype as well. Mm-hmm. And add one more layer to it. Good. Good. Now those... Just sit for two weeks. Yeah. The primary downside of this realistic water is it takes a very long time to cure. Um, at least a week to be properly cured. Um, the upside is you can get quite a bit out of one bottle. And apparently have some running down the side to get on your finger. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Should we wipe it off? No, I wiped it off already. Okay. Well, I'm wearing a glove. So, that's all fine. Alright. Okay, well, let me give this some more shaking and need <laughs> some more of these little straps. As far as I can see them. Alright, I'm gonna move my workstation back in where I'd like it to be. And take a look at how my horse is drying. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this so far. So the front half has been washed and it's still tacky it's not fully dry yet but um you got a lot more little detail so i'm gonna start moving back on the horse now carefully um i'm gonna get these center cloths that make up the uh center portion of the abdomen of the horse i don't know the center part of the horse and um, just start getting those a bit closer to where I want them. Just carefully adding a bit here and there at a time. Get the stirrups. Tone down that brass a little bit. Um, oh, and that is one thing I forgot to do on the top part of the horse is uh, hit the brass with a little bit of wash and that actually went a little too far but luckily what's fairly it's really easy to just dry your brush off and just poke where there's too much wash and it sucks it right out so i'm gonna do the same these little like side medallions are a little bright on their own So I'm just going to put a little black wash on them to tone them in. And 
Now where the black wash really will show is on the yellow. Because it's such a bright color. Um, which is a good thing. I'm gonna hit the little tummy part of the horse down below quick. Just to get it toned down, I really don't need to be all that detailed on some of the underside of the horse because ideally it'll be under it'll be hidden but i am going to start just making sure everything has a very thin coat so it has a consistent look it looks like because um what can happen is if you have like a section um, depending on the color, it can sort of look like it's completely out of place, like it's not part of the world that it's in. Um, I don't know how best to describe it, but it just, it makes it look, it, it pops too much compared to the rest of it, and it can make the whole thing look kind of weird. So I'm going to be also taking a very light amount, a very, very light amount of wash. And there's a couple spots where, like, there's sort of tension in the muscles of the horse that I want to just bump the contrast up very slightly, very, very slightly in order to create that sort of sense of strength and movement. Um, because it's a very nice detail model, I kind of want to play into that a little bit. So. And then I'm just going to keep extremely lightly hitting this quilt on the, on the seat. until it really shows the appearance. So I think I have a good center part of the horse. And what I'm going to do now is carefully just grabbing the hoof, which I've left on painted on purpose. The hooves aren't painted yet. I'm probably going to just give them a nice little black at the end um, once the whole thing has dried. Grabbing the front hoof, I'm going to paint first the wood parts of the saddle, which are up higher. Letting the black sink in and then removing some of the surface parts that I don't want as dark. And then getting a nice on on the saddle itself. And then dry off and pull away. It's a really easy, good way to do it because 
You don't want areas that are just black. And you generally, as a general rule, kind of want a uh, model to have this sort of dynamic where the higher points on any given part of it are brighter than the furthest back points. It gives a sense of dimensionality to the piece. Um, our eyes sort of see that contrast and read things that are brighter as closer to ourselves. Um, and it can be pretty subtle on a figure this small, but it can actually uh, really help the readability of the piece. Uh, now I'm going to just work on some of this uh, gray that's in between all of the uh, back leather parts. And start slowly working down the leg. Everything like that. Again, I'm doing sort of a subtractive uh, approach to this, where I am applying more than I want, and then intentionally, intentionally, and then pulling it back away um, from the higher points. And what this lets you do is really get into the lower areas without worrying too much about, you know, messing up a higher point because you can, uh, you can always pull most of it away. Just making sure I get the underside of the horse as well. Because while it's not generally visible, if it ever becomes visible, it will stand visible. out considerably if it's extra bright. And once you get that base coat in about where you want it, um, now is a good time to just take smaller amounts of wash and just carefully applying it in areas and pulling away. It's a lot of give and take with wash. But so I want to make sure I enunciate some of this musculature on the horse. And I want. I want some areas where, like, the board, the, there's a, for example, here, this sort of barding along the back. I want to try and get a little bit m more dark in the crease there in order to sort of show 
the depth and barrier. The depth of the barrier. But you don't want to tear it too much. So, like I've been doing, I am putting a little extra in. And then just carefully sucking it back up with the brush to create that subtle line. You can do that by hand. Um, and it's not terribly hard, but it is take a lot of um, focus and concentration and a fairly steady hand. And on a piece like this, especially, um, you can achieve something maybe not quite as nice, but fairly similar. Um, that you might want to do a more detailed line work on if it was like a character figure or like a primary antagonist, but when it's just a horse that may or may not, you know, pop in and out as you're playing, you uh, don't really need to worry too much. So, what do you think? I like it. Yeah. It's really good, yeah. It's still shiny, because it's drying. And this won't be dry properly for like an hour. You want to give it to like really properly dry but um what i'll probably do next time i do is just go in pop the hooves in and be done with the horse now that it has its shading and i want to quick check yes its nostrils stay dark so and then what i just did now which is always fun, is accidentally hit my ox with uh, black wash. What you can do in a situation like that is if you don't want it washed, just take a little paper towel and suck it up while it's still wet. And you pretty much can get all of it. Um, I would start tackling those ox, but those bases are taking an eternity to dry. Um, so I'm probably gonna let them keep drying. Um, yeah. Which means I need to figure out what I'm gonna work on next. Mm-hmm. Other than the other horse, because... We have one more horse here. Which is currently just, you know, black primer. This is how it started when I started painting this guy. Um... Don't want to jump into an, a third horse in a row, necessarily. No, are we almost ready to start doing tiles? Mm. Well, let me look at our sheet. We've been printing out dungeon tiles um, for a new set. We're getting closer. There's a lot of pieces. So maybe next time we can start just slamming paint onto tons of tiles. <laughs> but, yeah, I think we're not going to be able to jump into, I don't know, we might be able to jump into the next week, but, or, not next week, but Friday. Um, we just gotta keep printing them. Mm -hmm. If you can help, remember to pop down and print yeah. more and more and more. Just start, start another one. Generally, now that we're getting into the fiddly bits, we might need to shift around a little bit periodically with what ones we print. Mm, to make sure we have enough of just the right ones. Mm-hmm. But one thing we can start Friday if you want, if you don't want to tackle more horses. Well, this one's not going to be done. So. In this little container here, we have all of these little things. And what these are, are modular scaffolding pieces. So we can take some time and work out together. How these all fit together. 
Mm -hmm. And create scaffolds. That we, uh... That we will then climb, or not. Well, what I'm think, what it sort of looks like you do is you glue corners together. And then after we're done gluing all these, like, corners together, making boxes and putting the top planks on them, is, uh, once they're done all painted, we can take some of our thinnest rope or string or twine mm -hmm. and wrap them around different sections to look like they're bound together with ropes. Um, things like that. That could be fun to do. So there's some fun stuff. Get to bring back my uh if you get bored we have one more uh bookshelf here more of a scroll mm -hmm. shelf uh that can be painted nice and quick But yeah, so horse is done and drying. It'll be a little less shiny once it's dry, which will be nice. So I'm not I'm not sure how much more I have to do in this moment. Um, you yeah, know, pretty much finished. I'm kind of at a point where I don't want to jump into something new these ox that i've been painting are just taking way too long to dry especially on the hooves which is quite annoying but i can finish those up next time and uh have a pair of ox just for fun um i don't know i might end it a little early 440. Mm, yeah. Um, I mean, I could do a little more touching up, but things are kind of... But I'm sort of hitting a wall where I don't want to jump into a new horse or a new thing or scaffolding mm -hmm. until... I mean, you could put brown paint on the bookshelf, I guess. Yeah. I could do that. Might as well. Yeah, and I'm going to do some touching up. So... Uh -huh. This is just a little scroll shell that we printed. Really quick and easy, but it's a nice little doodad to throw inside a dungeon set. Um, you know, nothing special. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm thinking I'll use something lighter. I think this deck tan. Make it sort of a light wood. And I'm just going to get it painted, make it really simple. Um, let, once it's dry, I'll be able to put a quick umber wash over it, give it some depth and everything. Um, just to round out the day, something nice and simple. And since it's all one color, there's... One thing that might be fun to do with something like a scroll case is take tiny bits of parchment colored paper, cut little strips, roll them up, glue them, and create little uh, little scrolls that you can glue into these compartments after they're all painted. Um, it could be fun. Yeah, that might be a thing we do after this scroll case is done, just to give some life to it. Because otherwise you just have this empty scroll case, it's kind of boring. Um, I 
So maybe that's something we'll work on. So I'm actually, for the sake of my sanity here, I'm just going to plop paint in the backs of each of these cubbies before doing the wall. Because I don't want to have to reach back past a bunch of painted uh, edges to get the back. But the nice thing about doing shelves like this is they're pretty quick and easy. They're all one wood. They're very simple sort of shelves, but something that can add a lot of character to a uh, otherwise empty room or dungeon. Because it's not too often you walk into a room and it's just bare except for like a single bed or something like that. So having a lot of little bits and pieces, even if they're really simple, can breathe life into a uh, a dungeon or a fight or something. If it's taking place inside someone's house or a wizard's tower or, uh, you know, a lich's lair in a crypt or something. A lich would have, you know, shelves of books. Because what else are you going to do for all eternity? That's mm, right. So now, now that I have the back of each of these cubbies um, painted, I'm just going to go one cubby at a time and make sure the uh, each of the sides is also painted. Um, and this print, well, simple, actually has a nice sort of wood grain to it, so there's a surprising amount of surface area hidden inside each uh, section. But one of the advantages of that is that when you hit it with a wash later, if I might do an umber wash on this because it's sort of a beige wood, um, is all of those wood grainy effects from the print are going to show a lot when uh, when it's washed. So it's kind of... On the downside, it does take more paint than you're expecting. On the upside, it gives a lot of visual interest to something that's relatively simple. Um, which is kind of nice. Honestly. bad. What's she? Yeah, especially at the start. Mm. That's too bad. You settle down later on, but it was a little rough at the beginning. Sophie is our dog. And one wonder 
like what I'm talking about. Seems to be out of practice. Yeah, we had a few days of torrential rain in our era, and it was not an ideal walking condition for taking a dog out on a walk, so she was relegated to playing fetch indoors and things like that for a few days. So. So, I don't know what color to make the saddle itself. Well, that saddle, I think, is a leather um, piece. Yeah, it's, I've been doing that dark, this dark blue for the leather pieces, but I was thinking doing? maybe, the, and I did the rim of it in the dark. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe the saddle itself should be a different color. Well, you know. you could do that as a unpainted leather, an undyed leather, if you wanted. Yeah. Um, as it's more of a functional interact with the butt sort of piece. Mm -hmm. This is more of a military horse, the one you're painting, mm -hmm. rather than like a showy horse like the one I just painted. Or it has a very fancy saddle. And it, it, your saddle does have rivets in it, mm -hmm. so you'll want to play into those a little bit. You could do them in like a black or very, very dark. But your leather is already pretty dark, so. Mm -hmm. And then the bedroll. I oh, know you love your bedrolls. Mm -hmm. So, I'm getting through all of these cubbies. They're not super visible on screen because I'm using a very light beige. But I'm just making sure every side of the cubby is painted. You don't want any of your primer showing in awkward areas. So I'm going one at a time through each cubby sort of methodically and painting it in. Now that all the cubbies are painted, I'm going to do the face of each of them. And they're mostly already painted just by nature of filling in the cubbies, but I want to make sure that it is consistent across. The whole front. So doing a terrain piece like this is actually pretty nice because it requires very little in the way of practice. Um, it's hard to go wrong. Um, have to redo anything, so it can be a nice way to uh, just sort of learn some basics about how does paint go onto a figure, how do you load a brush, how do you control the volume on a brush, things like that. You can just slowly pay attention to as you're doing pieces that ultimately aren't very exciting, but um, if you're doing this for Dungeons and Dragons or some other role-playing game with a combat, uh, it never hurts to have extra pieces to just fill out a scene. So the backside here probably won't get seen very much, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't at least give it a real rough coat, because um, if it ever falls over, or if the DM decides, I'm going to put a secret door behind this shelf, and it pulls open. You don't want it to look unfinished on the back. Um, and 
just by throwing a simple coat of paint over the back, it gives it that consistent look. And then I'm going to pop it down. And the only side I have left to do is the very top. So I don't want to handle it too much because it is wet pretty much everywhere. And I don't want to peel paint off or make too much of a mess on my own hands. But as long as I'm careful, I won't knock it over. And now I can just let this sit and dry for a while. Um, what I'm going to do is close up my bottle of paint. Try desperately not to knock this over while I wipe off my brush, clean it out, get it back to where it needs to be. And I just have a lot of things drying and it's just about five. Mm -hmm. So, um, you found something? Well, this was what, sort of by accident, but it looks kind of cool. Is I'm going to dry brush copper over the highlights. Mm, okay. Um, Let's see what happens. We'll be back on Friday. Um, our our D and D stream is Sundays at two p.m. Eastern. Um, so we'll be there with that, and we'll be announcing we are doing a Halloween special coming up, um, which should be very fun. It's going to be a two-part series over Halloween weekend, um, so please make sure you check that out. We're going sort of all out on it. Um, oh yeah, it's pretty exciting, mm -hmm. and that will be pre-recorded. Um, and I think... We might be recording that this weekend, I forget. Anyway, thank you all for showing up, people who chatted. Thank you. And, um, thank you. And we'll see you Friday. Well, we'll be painting again Friday at mm -hmm. 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, there'll be a rebroadcast of our latest episode on Thursday. And, yeah. And we're looking to add some more content, so maybe keep an ear out for that. Yep, that's so, good. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.